This is the first time a plant has grown on the moon. Actually, according to the Chinese government, this marks the completion of humankind's first biological experiment on the moon, which, even though the plant died shortly after it sprouted, is still a huge scientific breakthrough. It means a lot for the future of space travel, moon bases, and it could even help to make humans an interplanetary species. But this isn't the first time plants have grown off of Earth. Plants and seeds have actually been growing and floating in space sporadically since the 1970s thanks to astronauts, though more recent research has been conducted aboard the International Space Station starting in 2010, when NASA began experimenting with space gardens, which are essentially pressurized greenhouses in space. The biggest challenge to surmount in growing plants off Earth has always been the lack of Earth-like gravity. On Earth, roots grow into the Earth, while stems, petals, leaves, and more grow towards the light. In microgravity, or zero gravity, roots grow in all directions, and water also doesn't stay put. So scientists had to create special bags to ensure seeds stayed put in an orientation that would allow their roots to grow down and into fertilized soil while their leaves would grow up, and water would be administered in a controlled fashion through these white tabs. With many years of research, scientists have gotten pretty good at growing plants in microgravity, and they even have pretty good flavor. Scientists have grown everything from lettuce to sunflowers, rice, wheat, and even trees. So what makes this time different and potentially more exciting? Well, this time, plants have grown on the actual surface of the moon, the far side of the moon, under moon gravity, with limited exposure to the moon's environment because the experiment took place on a lunar lander spacecraft, but still on the moon. The moon is a much more difficult environment to grow plants on than the ISS, due to the high levels of radiation and extreme temperatures due to the lack of a thick atmosphere. Because of that, scientists created a small, controlled, Earth-like environment inside their ship on the moon to see if they can make their leafy dreams a reality. They used Earth soil, oxygen from Earth, and even Earth-captured sunlight to assist in growth. And for a short period of time, it worked. These tiny cotton sprouts are an example of that. Of course, the goal now is to push further and create a tiny, self-sustaining biosphere on the moon. To do this, they brought not only cotton seeds, but also rapeseed, potatoes, rockcress, yeast, and fruit flies. Each of these have a distinct purpose. Cotton seed would be useful for making clothes. Rapeseed could produce oil. Potatoes and yeast can be used for cooking. Rockcress helps with photosynthesis and producing oxygen. And the fruit flies are there to test that the oxygen given off by the photosynthesis of these plants is usable to support life. And so far, their research has been progressing in an extremely positive direction. Creating a microbiome is a good indicator that we'd be able to build a larger biome, one large enough to be habitable by humans. This doesn't mean we'll be able to recreate earthly environments on the moon, but it does mean that we'd be able to feed ourselves adequately, breathe a bit easier, and potentially sustain life for an extended period of time on the lunar surface. If we could pull this off, this would make the moon a perfect way station or space base for when humans go interplanetary. NASA, the European Space Agency, and many other space agencies have already begun planning to use the moon as a way station, as they see it as integral for humans to become an interplanetary species. One reason for this is because landing on the moon would give astronauts one more place to refuel, both in terms of petroleum and in terms of groceries, before taking off to another planet. It would also give them a shorter distance to travel to get to those planets. And above all, it would be way more fuel efficient to launch rockets to other planets from the moon. That's because of the lower gravity, meaning it would require a much lower escape velocity and far less fuel use. Interplanetary travel, sustainable plant growth in space, and the creation of a space base is obviously a few years into the future, but the seeds of their potential have already been planted, and now they're starting to sprout. With more research and testing, these cotton sprouts could potentially propel us into a greener space age.